Happy Friday, all! Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. Uh, we are working on the giraffe tonight. We actually finished the giraffe uh, last night, and now we're going to work on the G's. Uh, and I think we will actually prep this one and the fox one for quilting as well. I don't think I'm going to quilt either of them till uh, next week after we finish the hedgehog, uh, but I want them ready so we can quilt all three of those uh, hopefully at the end of next week. So thanks again for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners, and I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. It's a time that we can relax and craft together. So, all right, let's get going. Okay, happy, happy Friday uh, to you too, Adrian. All right, let's scoochie on in. Okay, so I just love how our little uh, tufted tail, um, our turkey work tail, I should say, uh, turned out uh, yesterday. Like it's like it's like a half an inch off of the off of the uh, piece there. I think that's so fun. So tonight, really, all we have left is uh, the two letter G's, and we had talked about doing a, a whipped bat stitch for that, so I think we're going to give that a try. And I haven't quite decided if I'm going to do it um, with the same color as the whip or, or something else. And I'm kind of leaning towards another color, because I just think a whipped back stitch with two colors it just makes it look like there's baker's, baker's twine sitting on top, and I think it's just really pretty. And all right, you guys, I am, it is steamy today, finally. Like, we are having a nice day. I spent the day outside, or a good portion of it. I was checking, I was testing that uh, chunky boy a little bit more, and uh, um, just, I've been basically crocheting all day. It's been nice. Uh, all right, let's... At this it's just it was just so beautiful i walked to the post office um so all you guys orders are, are out in the mail i walked there this morning and it was just so nice to be outside and uh, was i even wearing a coat i don't think so i was just wearing my um jean shirt thing all right let's uh oh i'm gonna start with an away knot here Actually, let's start with where I leave just a little end hanging out, and then uh, uh, when I'm almost out of thread, I will tuck that, tuck that in when I'm done. So we're gonna start a back stitch here, and I'm gonna leave like a stitch length. Uh, just like I said, I will leave a little bit of this end out. I'm feeling too lazy to do in a, a, a true, like a way knot today. So I'm just going to leave a little end out, enough to make this lat stitch and to weave in the end. So we're going to hold that down. Oh, you got your box of goodies, Robin. Yay. Oh, good. That came pretty quickly. That's great. Ooh, Catherine says, I may be pushing it, but I planted three plants in one of my garden beds. Oh, that's exciting. So that's, that's the big plan. Not, not so much, um, not so much planting but that's our big plan for tomorrow i think uh um we want to spend the day in the yard since it's actually going to be finally nice out and we can i don't know clean up clean up the yard a little bit post winter cleanup oh tammy says it's been raining all day in pennsylvania oh man we were supposed to get rain yesterday but it never happened Oh, Robin says I put a picture of what I'm working on on the on the Facebook page on the Penguin and Fish Crafters group um, page. I'll have to I'll look at that right when we're done here. I've not been on the computer all day, you guys. It's crazy. Except for like my morning meeting with with Jenna. But I didn't do much today, so I'm gonna have to pick up the pace like this weekend. I'll have to after after tomorrow. Tomorrow is dedicated to. Uh, whatever we're doing in the yard. Oh, and my nails. <laughs> Tomorrow is dedicated to my nails, honestly. <laughs> this is the end of the three-week mark. I, I cannot let these ride any longer. Uh, so Saturday, tomorrow, is going to be new color day for, for the dip nails, uh, the dip powder nails. Um, I'm going to go with that, like, princessy pink. I have two colors I haven't used yet, and, um... It was voted to do the princessy pink. 
or like that I don't know I don't know the real name of it but like like a bubble gum cotton candy but maybe a little little lighter uh, a little sweeter uh, pink so we're gonna go with that and then I have like a kind of a mauveish neutral those are the last two colors I haven't tried yet uh, with the four that I got so it'll be an adventure of uh, taking off the nails again and then uh, then doing the new color. So I figured that's going to take like freaking half the day. So I got to leave it for a Saturday. <laughs> but that's that's my plan. Do all the outside gardeny lawn stuff first and then then do that. Is it petal pink? It is it is that I don't know what the name is for sure. Um, but it is it is kind of that that petal pink like our like the nail pol or like the um our petal our petal color so it'll be kind of like this I think like a little pretty princessy petal pink but yep that that is the color and then I'll have one one left after that so another three weeks and I will try my last color but it, it has been awesome to just um not have to do my nails every two days that's for sure but it's a whole event it seems when I have to redo it so <laughs> Uh, that event is tomorrow. Oh, Denise says she got her chickens today in the mail. Uh, our embroidery of the month. Yay, that's awesome. Our embroidery of the month. Let's see, I think I got that in Armour's Reach yet. Yeah, so our embroidery of the month this month is the little chickens. And uh, here's it in, in our kit. I think our kits are, are so cute. Uh, but yeah, so it comes with everything you need. And that is this month's Embroidery of the Month. So we'll be stitching that uh, the third week of the month. So next week we'll be stitching the Hedgehog Embroidery, uh, which is part of this collection. So letter H, basically. And then after that... Um, after that comes the chickens, the embroidery of the month. All right, we're doing a whip back stitch, so I think maybe I want two stitches here. I don't know, it's been a while since I've done a, a whipped back stitch. So a whipped back stitch is basically where you stitch a back stitch, a plain normal back stitch. Oh yes, Robin, so I'm gonna be doing a whipped back stitch uh, for, for these G's instead of, instead of the satin stitch. So a whipped back stitch is basically you first outline everything in a back stitch, a normal plain old back stitch. That's what I'm doing now. And then you go back in with either the same color or a different color and you loop around each stitch and it kind of looks like Baker's twine. I think if you use a different color, then it then it looks like Baker's twine. Uh, if you use the same color, then it just almost looks like a. It almost looks like a little skein of floss, like a, a a thing of floss, but it's just laying perfectly on the surface, like right where you want it. It's kind of a cool effect. I I really really do like it. I don't do it often enough. Not often enough at all. I think it's just because it's a whole extra step. So I'm just like, eh, let's just get it done. But uh, it is pretty. It's worth that extra step. I, I don't know how it's going to work. I, I don't do it often, so I don't quite know how it's going to work around all these points and these, these short little areas and these angles. Um, on a long line or a long arc, I know it, it looks really nice, but we'll... We'll see, I guess. Oh, Anne, that sounds awesome. Anne says, I went to a little step-by-step -step watercolor painting uh, thing last week, and it inspired me. Yay! I just got a new set of watercolors, and now I can't figure out, oh, where I want to start, LOL. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> Don't just, like, pick anything set a piece of fruit on the table and be like, okay, this is what I'm doing. Or buy yourself some pretty flowers and for the purpose of painting and then just paint those same flowers like 12 times. Or literally like paint an apple 
like 12 times. That's that's actually a, a um in art school we always had to do that like get a plain object. Um oh, YouTube's frozen. Oh, let's see. Yeah, YouTube is frozen. Let's see. Oh, it's is it um How is it doing on Oh, is it frozen on Facebook too? Huh. It's not frozen for me, and it says I have good, um, good, uh, uh, things here. Let's see. So, let me see if I can jump out of it. I'm going to flip cameras for a sec here. No. Let's see. Can you guys hear me at all? All right, well, if you guys can hear me, we are working fine on, oh, it is it is being a little bit weird now. We're working fine on um, YouTube. Oh, there, it was able to flip cameras. Okay, yay, it flipped cameras. Okay, let me just um, reset this one camera. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, it's not even seeing this camera. Hold on. Hold on, I think I may have bent this cord. All right, hold on, you guys. Sorry about the, all this. Hmm. All right, well, we're gonna hang out here instead today. <laughs> so, all right, so that, that uh, face camera seems to work. So, I guess we're just gonna chit chat. <laughs> All right, let's let's see. I think. Um, let me know if you guys can see me now. It doesn't look like it's popped up quite yet. But all right. So I think I think we're kind of working now. <laughs> so uh, I think my my cord got totally bent. So I think I actually need a new cord there. So we're gonna be uh, just straight on today, I guess. So. <laughs> Not really much to see. Uh, oh, but I can zoom this out, so hold on a sec. Yeah, there's my armpit for you guys. There we go. So, <laughs> there we go. So, I'll just be out here um, today, and we can we can chit-chat, but I can show you guys the where we're at uh, as we work here. But, yeah. So, there. We're fine. <laughs> so, I'll have to get this fixed, obviously, but... We can still chit chat. Good thing it's Friday, right? So, anywho, that's a bummer. I will, I will uh, test that. Test that again. It, it's literally my camera that's that's hanging on above me here. The whole cord looked like it was bent up. So, anywho, uh, just doing this back stitch though. So nothing, nothing all that crazy. But yeah, you guys, I, uh, oh, I forgot what we were talking about just now, but I am uh, so happy that I can go sit outside. So I did, I don't know if you guys saw, I did a little video of working with that um, ergonomic crochet hook uh, handle a little bit more, and that worked so well. Um, I was saying that uh, before using it, my hand and wrist were getting like super duper tight and tired working on that, that blanket and uh, um, I didn't feel like that at all today which was crazy okay YouTube's fine yeah okay so I think I think we're just oh we're probably this guy's probably in focus really weird too on here but all right well <laughs> we're we're in crazy town today so uh, I guess that's just how it's gonna be today so sorry about that Almost done with the G, the first G. We are fine on TikTok still if you wanted to see like a close up and stuff too. But yeah. Oh, Anne says, I love the whipped backstitch. 
it hides all the uneven unevenness of the backstitch. Yeah. So that's what's going to be kind of fun about this. Okay, so I think I can get all the way around with this one thread, which I was not expecting at all. I think let's do let's do the whip stitch on this first letter G before moving to the small letter G. I think that'll be good. Oh, uh, Brittany says that's awesome that the crochet ergonomic handle helped. And you know what? It was it helped in a weird way. Like I wasn't gripping onto it like hardly at all, but the weight of it and the size of it just allowed it to like just rest in my hand. And uh, um, just that resting there and not having to like hold onto my my hook tightly that I think is what helped my hand. So I, it just was kind of like dangling in my hand and I'd have my finger up to like uh, grab the yarn and stuff. And it just, just like rested there. And uh, I didn't, I didn't have to um, squeeze my, it's, it's this motion. And this is the motion that hurts while uh, embroidering and stuff too. Uh, and, and on this side too. So holding the, holding the, um, the piece that I'm crocheting on this side and then holding the neat, the hook tight on this side, I think is what was doing it. So now my hand wasn't in that position anymore. It was just like more open, like more natural, uh, more restful. And uh, it really made a huge difference. It was surprising. So it wasn't the fact that like the, it wasn't like the grip that like I was having a, a rounder, bigger grip. It was just that I was allowed to, because of that grip, let it just rest in my hand. So that was, that was interesting. Oh yeah. Amy says, uh, camera chest tonight. Sorry. Late. Yeah. My, uh, my above camera just died on me. I think, I think I broke the cord. <laughs> I think I, I tilted it a bit. All right. So I am doing uh, the last stitch on this letter G Oh, Silver Tammy says, oh, cool. I see you on TikTok, on my phone, and YouTube on the TV. Yes. Oh, that's so funny. Yes. So you can do it that way. That, that way you'll get um, both views. <laughs> For sure. That's funny. Uh, all right. So I'm weaving in the end of the G here. And uh, I have that one last stitch to do with that starting. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to drop my needle with that starting part. But dang, I was not thinking we'd make it around the whole G with just that one strand so that worked out perfectly all right let's grab the scissors all right and uh, now I just have that one like dangling thread there so let's get that and I'm kind of leaning towards a different color for the whip the whipped part of the whipped back stitch whip <laughs> I feel like on Family Guy. Um, ooh, I think I'm going to sneeze too, you guys. Man, I'm a mess today, apparently. Um, all right. So I don't know what color, though. And I'm almost thinking this gray that I have sitting here, but I don't have that gray anywhere else in the piece. But really, the only other colors I have are the two oranges. And I don't know. I think it'd be a little bit weird to do the whip in the orange. I kind of think this gray would be pretty. I, I kind of want to do it in the gray. And then we can open up, open up the gray too, which is one of the colors that we haven't done yet. So I think we're going to do that. So here's the overcast color. Uh, I think we will take this and use it for our whip. Although we do have this like light blue that would be pretty too, but I don't know. I kind of like the gray. Let's do the gray. So I think this is going to make it look like the baker's twine. I think that's really kind of cute and fun. So let's let's get a little piece out. I don't think we need a ton, but I'm going to just grab my normal amount. Uh, so I don't know, 24 inches or so. We'll do, we'll keep up with our three strands. Oh, Amy's asking, Alyssa, I have a... Off topic question, please. What size crochet hook were you using for the 12 weight thread? Mm. Oh, I do have it near me. I was thinking, ugh, I don't have, I have, I put the emergency craft project back in my, 
uh, bag, but I didn't. I, I have it sitting out here yet, so let me check. Here's my <laughs> emergency craft project. Uh, I haven't carried that bag anywhere in a, in a while, so I haven't really had a my emergency craft project on me, which I don't like. Okay, it is a 1.3 millimeter. It says 10 on here, but you know, I think 1.3 millimeter is gonna is gonna get you where you need to be. So that's, I think that's been fine with this. I don't recall wishing it was bigger or smaller. So 1.3 millimeter itty bitty bitty um, crochet hook. So that's what I've been using for the, the 12 weight thread. And I, I do wanna work on this project a little bit more. That's why I have it out here still. A bag within a bag within a bag within a bag. That's all my stuff. But yeah, so uh, that's, gosh, I'm, I'm feeling the projects adding up in my brain again. All these like little projects that, that I have laying around. And I, I'm thinking too, which is a whole nother project. Uh, I, I think I'd like to make some sort of like craft planner or like a planner that's craft based. So like I could, whenever like a random project like that pops up where I remember, um, I can just kind of like add it to a list and uh, like write down the progress, like where I'm at with it, like a little checklist, plus have like a note section and like a normal calendar and that sort of thing. So I have kind of have that in the back of my mind too. Uh, Cause I feel like I'm needing it lately. Like I'm, I need like a list and I like writing stuff on paper. So I'm kind of, kind of thinking I want to do some sort of planner that's craft related. I don't know. Let me know if that's something you guys uh, would be interested in. Cause I just found this too. I've been cleaning through all my craft stuff, like all, you know, I got bins and bins of stuff in the basement and I found this too. Uh, it's, it's a bunch of um, little Tyranno or tri Triceratops uh, that I stitched for a video uh, years ago. And I should do this video again because it, it makes you a little dizzy <laughs> watching it. But uh, I, I like this one that's all filled in. And I kind of want to put that on my, my, my jean jacket thing here. So that's like another project. <laughs> and I found, along with me cleaning that stuff up, I found a just a little baby quilt or like a mini quilt. And I'm like, oh, I thought I made this to give to someone. And why didn't I give it to them? And then I, ha so I, I got it out and then I saw that there's like oil marks all over it. And I'm like, how did oil marks get on this? And then I'm thinking, that's probably why I never gave it to the person cause I got oil on it somehow. I don't know, maybe for my sewing machine or something, but I don't know. So there's a whole pile of oil marks on this cute little quilt uh, with stars all over it. And I'm like, ah, oh, geez. Um, but then I was like, ooh, but I could cut it up and make it into a tote bag. And it would be just as cute, like a little, um, like little kid's book tote bag that would be like quilted because it's already done. It'd be quilted. So I do like bias tape or something for the seams and it would be just like the cutest freaking tote bag. So I want to make, so I want to turn this uh, mini quilt into a tote bag, um, which, you know, is another project. So I'm, I'm in the like, man, I gotta, I need like a spreadsheet to rack this up, but I never, spreadsheets kind of disappear in the ether <laughs> for me. So something written down would be better. Oh, Denise says, uh, I wish I could find a planner that I'd actually stick to. Yeah, that's a little bit of my concern. I used to put everything in one book, like one sketchbook, but I am now, I've been kind of reverting back to just piles of notes everywhere and then I then I um, consolidate the notes at some point. Amy says I think I would love a craft planner but I would like inserts that are removable maybe like a ring binder. Yeah that's a good idea. Sylvia says it sounds good. I, I have so many I hate to start something else. I know like that's what I'm thinking too like if I see all the projects like in a list I might be able to just like check them off a little bit more. I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. I, I wove in the end here. So let's, let's do the whip. So I'm coming up uh, just at the corner of one of these stitches, like the starting point, I guess. 
Yeah, that's right. I think I want to start up in a corner, right? I think so. Or do I start in the middle of a stitch? I'm not sure. I'm going to just start, I'm just going to come up at the, like, at a corner point here. Oh, yes, I'm a natural blonde. That's Jenna. <laughs> Jenna says, I like to, I like the removable idea because then you could rearrange my priority of project. Ooh, I like that idea. Oh, Robin's asking, what am I using? I'm using Overcast, uh, that light gray. So the lightest gray uh, Overcast for, for my whip. I think it's going to look good. So, all right. So here's how you do the whipped back stitch. I've come up at, at one of my points here and I'm never going to go to the back of my piece. I'm just going to go underneath each stitch and I'm going to, I'm going to always come from the same direction. So, uh, like I'm, I'm coming, um, right to left. So if I kept moving, it would always be like right to left. So basically I'm going from the outside to the inside of this G. So I'm going to go around every stitch. So just go underneath, pull through, and then I'm just going to move my thread out of the way. And then I'm going to go underneath the next stitch. And uh, you can see we're making a little, little like whip, um, this little spiral basically. And I love doing it another color. I think this gray is going to look cute. I'll, I'll show it up. Um, I'll show it in front of me here um, in a sec here. Amy said, in the past, I came up along the edge, not the middle. I'm kind of thinking that that's right, because then it'll look like I'm coming up on the edge. I think maybe it's hidden enough. Yeah, I, I pulled it through just a little bit more. So it looks, yeah, you're right, though. I think I came up in the middle of a stitch on an edge to make it always look like I'm, I'm, I'm whipping from the middle. Yeah, so I kind of screwed that up a little bit, but I don't think you can see it. Anyway, let's... I think uh, I gotta keep holding the thread out of the way because it keeps wanting to be in my eyesight a little bit. Oh, I'm using three strands still. So I used three strands for the back stitch, and I'm using three strands for the whip. You can use whatever, I think. Um, actually, two strands might look pretty too. Then there'd be like a higher amount of blue that you'd see, I suppose, if you used less stitches for the whip. And I'm kind of rotating as I go. I don't know if I really need to do that, but I, I am rotating the whole embroidery while I do this. Maybe I don't need to do that. Yeah, I kind of do. So I'm not quite sure what to do to get to the at this bottom one. When I get to like all these points down here, but we'll just see how it goes. It looks so cute though. It, it looks like literal baker's twine just kind of resting perfectly on, on the surface. And actually, <laughs> actually this gray kind of matches the fabric color a little bit. So it almost looks like a whiskering of, of color with the blue, which I don't know if that's a good or bad idea. It definitely tones down the blue quite a bit. It's kind of fun. Okay, so I'm going from the outside in. So this one would have to go like from here. All right. This is where the twist is going to get a little goofy, but I think I think we're going to still get the overall effect here. Maybe I should have only just done one one stitch at this bottom, but It'll look fine. The turkey work is so cute, Amy says. Yeah, I think that turned out really fun. So here's here's what the whipped back stitch looks like so far. I don't know if you guys oops, I don't know if you guys can tell. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's cutting down that blue quite a bit. Not that I needed to do that, but it's kind of more of a reminder for me for later, like if I wanted to do that in a future project. I think it's so cute though. It's just a different look. What I find interesting too is how different from a back stitch it looks. Like it literally looks like 
yarn, oops, or like a twine sitting on top of the surface, just magically placed, like like you glued it in place almost. Um, but we're just whipping around a back stitch here. Oh yay! Amy says I'm working on my sunflower tomorrow. Ooh, you're doing it on a gray background so the yellow stands out. Oh, I have to see that. Uh, that sounds like a really great idea. Yeah, the yellow on gray would look awesome. So I'm like just kind of rotating this like crazy again. How do you decide what stitch you want to do? Um, Knufflers is asking. Uh, someone mentioned this the other day. That's how I decided for this one. So, uh, <laughs> I think, I think this whole giraffe has been just suggestions from people. Um, well, I started with the satin stitch and then uh, someone asked about a split stitch. So I'm like, yeah, let's do a split stitch for the whole outside. So that's why we did a split stitch for the outline. And uh, then, uh, uh, the... The uh, whipped back stitch got mentioned just in the conversation of talking about outline stitches and um, how a whipped back stitch kind of looks like a solid line, kind of like how I think a a stem stitch or not stem stitch a split stitch does. And then uh, we we're like, oh, well, let's do let's do the whipped back stitch for the letter G. So. Um, I've just been, and same thing with the, with the, the tail, that was a suggestion too, like, let's do the, um, turkey work for the tail, and I'm like, that sounds like a good idea, so I've just been kind of rolling with the ideas for, for this particular one, um, but, you know, if I were choosing on my own, I would kind of consider, it would be more of, like, how I want the, how I want like the overall feel to be, or maybe just like what I felt like doing that day, kind of like what we did here. Um, you know, I think this would have looked perfectly fine with a satin stitch too. So it's just whatever you're vibing with for real. Um, if you want to do, and you know, that also includes like, how much time do I want to spend on this? Or like, do I want to be all fussy with a satin stitch right now? Or do I just want to, you know, do like a stem stitch or something? Uh, and then, but you also have to kind of consider what you're stitching. So like something with tight curves like this would be like potentially kind of difficult with a stem stitch. So that wouldn't be my first choice. Um, you know, but something like this is, is working fine. So, so it's mostly just kind of what you're feeling. There's no, there's definitely no right and wrong, right or wrong. It's just, you do it one way and it's one look and you do it another way and it's another look. Oh, Amy says she'll post her, her, uh, sunflower on the gray when it's done. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to end this um, stitch kind of in the middle, like how we were saying I should have started. So I'm, I'm just going up to the next blue line and just kind of going down to the back underneath it in the middle. So it kind of, I think kind of looks like it's whipped around there. Uh, Denise says these two colors are looking good together. I think they're pretty fun. So here is up close for, for TikTok. It doesn't it look like a, a baker's twine. I think it's just so fun with the two colors. I'm not sure that gray was the right color to go with because it, it is kind of a lot like the background color. So it's kind of, um, making the blue just look like little wispy wisps, um, on the background, but that's kind of an interesting look. All right, I'm going to weave in that end, and I think we have plenty of gray here for to do the whip around the next next letter as well. But let's um, let's do the small letter G. So I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, I just thought that it would be fun to kind of do it the opposite, but I think I'm going to leave it the same. Like it'd be fun to stitch it in the gray, and then whip it with the blue. But I'm just thinking that the gray is so much like the background color that. Maybe that's not the best idea. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just leave it the same. But for a different time, I think that would be pretty fun. All right, let's get more blue out here. 
Oh, Denise says, I think that gray is perfect with the blue. They are pretty together. For sure. I think they complement each other well. I'm glad I didn't go with the orange, although the orange, I think, might have been fun. Like, that contrasty color. I don't know. That's the thing. You never know. It's just about playing around, seeing what works. Okay, I do have a little bit of this three strands of blue left. I suspect I will need more than this, but we'll, we'll start here. Um, needle. All right, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do it where it just kind of, I leave a little bit out and then I use that for the last stitch. That seemed easy last time. So again, we're doing just a plain old back stitch to start out. Oh, Amy says kind of makes it striped like a candy cane, exactly like a candy cane. That is exactly, exactly what it looks like. Okay. Oh, did you see the question, Robin? Let me scroll up. Oh, are you using, am, am I using, oops, shoot. Am I using two strands or three strands for the gray? I'm using three. So three for, for both. But I think I'll just start here. I definitely think I'll, oh wait, I was gonna start from the front. That's, yeah. So I'm leaving that little end out again, enough to do the last stitch and weave in the end. So about right there. Okay. Yep. I think I'll, I got it now. So yeah, three strands for both the blue and the gray. Actually, not quite sure we're even going to get this done yet tonight. I was thinking, oh, we're going to steam through these uh, whipped back stitches and uh, we'll get all of these pinned and ready to quilt, but I think we might just barely get through these whipped back stitches tonight, which is fine. I think next week, uh, next week we're going to be stitching the, the hedgehog, and I think that will uh, go... pretty quickly, I think. That one usually goes pretty quickly. So I'm hoping we can actually quilt all of these next week as well. So stitch and then quilt. We have the fox, uh, this giraffe, and then the hedgehog. So we'll have three to quilt, which will be fun. I think we were able to quilt a few of them in, in one day last time. I feel like I'm just moving my whole piece around a lot today. I'm excited for my new nails. <laughs> Ugh. It's, this is definitely the limit for them. Alrighty, I'm definitely gonna need more blue here soon. We used a crazy amount of that dark orange, the um, California poppy color on this, more than I was expecting with the um, turkey work tail and all that satin stitch. Oh, the hedgehog behind me did, Denise is asking, um, the hedgehog behind me, did you stitch that freehand or had the pattern blown up? So that is the exact pattern that we're going to be stitching next week. Uh, I blew it up somewhere between 400 and 600%. So just on the photocopier or like, or, or the printer, I just um, blew it up. Oh, TikTok's going in and out with the sound. Oh gosh, I'm sorry about that. Jeez, everything is just going nuts so today. I'm sorry about the TikTok's hound as well. Um, jeez. Piles of crazy today. But yeah, so the the uh, hedgehog behind me is the same hedgehog uh, just blown up. I think it was like, yeah, I don't know, 400% on the, on the copier. And I just kept trying different sizes until it Still, it was like the size that I wanted and then, you know, printed out on eight and a half by 11 that I had to tape together. And then I think I just um, probably taped it to the fabric and traced it kind of like how I did the, the tulips for the 
punch needle. It's the same fabric. It's that same monk's cloth. So just traced it on. I probably used a water sol soluble marker though. I, I don't remember. It's been a few years. Um, but yeah, so then I stitched it with yarn onto monk's cloth. The only other thing I did change uh, with it is that I flipped it. <laughs> so, so our hedgehog is going to be in the, in the other direction. I flipped it because, um, I don't know if it still does it. Yeah. So the camera, oh wait, no, <laughs> my new, my new setup, it reverses the, the design. So you're actually seeing it in reverse. Um, but I stitched it in reverse because when I used to be or when I used to do Facebook lives or whatever my camera would flip the background so I, I did it in reverse so it would be look the right way in in um, the camera the mirror image but now it's now in the new setup it's it's actually wrong but yeah so that's the only other thing Can you imagine turkey work? Oh, on the hedgehog, it would take forever. And it would, uh, and saying, can you imagine the t doing turkey work on the, on the hedgehog? So like having the back be floofy, but dang, would that be fun? That would take forever. I would use so many skeins of, of thread too, which is fine. So many skeins of floss. Uh, it would be fun. Kind of totally want to do that now. That's why I was thinking with the the lion when we do the lion, that'll be letter L, so it'll be coming up soon. That would be fun to do all turkey work, but that too would take ages. Uh, but maybe it'll maybe that's still a fun plan. We'll have to see. Oh, you can't see the hedgehog. Oh yeah, Robin, it's it's the hedgehog that's behind me on the wall, um, on YouTube. On YouTube, um, it can be seen. But I've done on on TikTok, I've done like posts on it before. So if you scroll back, actually, in most of my videos, I'm sitting in front of it on on TikTok. So that's that's the hedgehog that's being referred to, the one that's on like that quilt, like a I don't know wall hanging quilt that's that's behind me. Okay, I actually am gonna make it around this, but I still need more for that that center, the center circle. But hey, I'm impressed. I was able to get all the way around, like just exactly with this one strand. All right, so I'm gonna weave in this end and then I have one more stitch to make with that um, one from the beginning. I'm gonna cut a new piece of blue and that will um, be for the circle in the middle of the small G. And then we'll try and get this whip done yet tonight. I might crochet a little bit more tonight before going to bed. Although my, I, you know, I've been crocheting like a lot today and my hand is still, is a little tired actually, but I, I was able to crochet hours more than I would have been able to uh, before without that new, the chunky boy uh, handle. So I am very pleased with it so far. I kind of want to get another one. In, in the small, so I got the medium on on uh, the, if you go to the, the Chunky Boy website, there's a chart for what size to get. There's three different size, small, medium, and large. And it and it says like what size needle works or hook works for each of those. Um, and there isn't one small enough for my tiny little metal hook, like the one that I was showing earlier for the that like 1.3 millimeter one. Uh, and that's kind of the one I want one for. So I'm kind of, I kind of want to get a small just to see if it maybe still fits, even though it, it's too small for the measurements that were said for the small, but I, I kind of want to try it anyway. Maybe I should ask, maybe I'll, I don't want to bother her either though. Um, I don't know what, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, um, ask the maker if if it would work for that small of a needle. I'm thinking it would because it, it really grips onto things really well. 
Ooh, Robin says I got punch needles. Nice. Hey, hexies. All right, let's grab my three strands here. Shoop. So I'm just doing that middle circle here. The uh, the center of the the G. But look at you guys, I have a single long sleeve shirt on and it's like pulled up. I'm not, I don't have three different sweaters on. That is a big change in my life <laughs> the past, uh, this week. So that's uh, so exciting. And it's supposed to be really nice tomorrow. That's when we're supposed to do all our outside stuff. So I'm feeling good about all that. Like I said, I walked to the post office today and that was just such a nice walk. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just let a little piece dangle out to finish finish that last stitch. Oop, not that much though. Or there, like so. Quick back stitch around this center area and then, then we'll whip it. I think we'll have just enough time to do that. And uh, I might not have enough thread. We're, we're going to see, though. I am, like, way happy with this fuzzy tail. <laughs> I think we're going to have to do, like, fuzzy tails for every single animal in this, this project. Oh, dang. Jill says, I'm in Wyoming, and like you, today was the first day I didn't have to wear three layers. Feels so nice. It is, like, this is the first day I went outside um, without a real coat on. Like, I wore the same thing outside as I, as I was wearing inside, even though it was still two long sleeve things, but still, improvement. And sunshine, and it just smelled good. It smelled like summer and spring, and... I mean, we're, like, late on all our plants, too. Like, we don't have, we're not even close to having lilacs or anything yet. Uh, there was a magnolia tree that I walked by today that was just starting the flower. Like, that's crazy late, right? I think it is. That's usually kind of, like, the first flowering thing in the neighborhood, and I haven't seen any of that. No tulips or nothing yet. Uh, so... Late, late. All right, weaving in that end, and let's get that last stitch on the front. I mean, it smells like warmth. <laughs> you walk outside, and when you come inside, you smell like warmth. It's just been nice. Oh my gosh, I can't get this one. I gotta trim the ends here. Thought maybe I could sneak in that, that last stitch, that last piece, but last strand, but I gotta get them all equal here. There we go. All right, one last stitch. Okay, let's weave in that end. And get to the get to the whipped part. Oh, hummingbirds arrived, Amy. Oh my gosh. So nice. Alrighty. We got our two Gs. So now on to that whip. And I think, I'm hoping I have enough to get around. Oh yeah, this should be more than plenty. Good, 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 good. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just weave in the end right here. Oh, you 
your daughter and you went foraging for ramps uh, today. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, you actually wore a t-shirt nor a sweatshirt. It's awesome. Oh, none of your lilacs. Jill says none of your lilacs or our lilacs or anything is out yet either. But I actually got excited yesterday because I saw some yellow dandelions in the neighbor's yard. <laughs> funny. Funny, funny. Yeah, we had rain last week and all of a sudden we have green grass after that. Barely. I mean, it's mostly dirt. Uh, but that's, that's, um, that's the plan for the weekend. Okay, I gotta come up on this side. Okay, I think I got this now. All right, let's do the whips on the out. I'm going from the outside to the inside of the shape. And wow, some of these stitches are a bit small. They're hard to get under. I think these are the stitches that I wove in the back, so they're kind of tight. Well, it's not easy to whip underneath. Let's see if I can loosen it a bit. There we go. I'm doing the hardest part first, but that's good. Get it out of the way. Good enough. There we are. I kind of think on the whipped back stitch, I kind of like it better with uh, stitches a little further apart. So I'm going to have to remember that next time. Next time I do a whipped back stitch. Nolene's asking, what has everyone got planned um, this weekend? I am working on stuff. I think I'm going to be making more kits on Sunday and working on some catalog stuff. And uh, Saturday, Saturday, I'm hoping to do get the yard whatever we're doing in the yard and just like prepped, like raked and I don't know, John's got a plan. And maybe just like look over the garden, make some decisions on what we want for garden stuff. I think we need to get dirt, look at our compost situation, maybe pull some of our, our spring onions or our, our walking onions. Those are kind of, they're everywhere and we could already start cutting them up, I think. Just start early, just actually use them this year instead of just letting them grow everywhere. Um, so that's my plan. Oh, and nails, 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 nails. Redoing the nails, which will take hours. <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully we can skim down the time it takes to do these silly nails, but I do, it's still worth it for the amount of time that they've lasted. What kind of kits do I make? Uh, I make embroidery kits. So this is one of our older ones. This is actually a pattern, but we do, uh, this is like our embroidery of the month. This one's an eight inch embroidery hoop kit, but we also have uh, four inch ones as well. And then some cute little bags and stuff. So embroidery kits basically and embroidery supplies and some other craft supplies. So we have a big variety, so I encourage you to check out uh, Penguin and Fish. We also have a free pattern if you want to learn how to do um, 14 different embroidery stitches. There's a free pattern with videos available as well. Ooh, dang, Denise says we have 15 pounds of crawfish order tomorrow for Mother's Day. Oh yeah, it's Mother's Day too. <laughs> I knew that. So that'll be fun. I hope everyone um, has a nice Mother's Day. Oh, Sophia says I'm doing the unicorn messy in the back. That sounds just fine. Oh, Jill says, uh, yes, we're going to have a nice day again tomorrow. Uh, so it'll be yard work for me too. Yeah, we haven't haven't got to do any of that yet. Like literally haven't been able to be outside like that yet. 
what is the finished size of a B C blocks? You mean like the letter B and C for for this project? I'm gonna make all of the blocks eight and a, I'm gonna cut all of the blocks to eight and a half inches. Uh, and then when they're sewn into the quilt, they'll end up being eight inches. I have not cut any of them down yet. Um, I'm starting out with them rather large. And then I will I will cut them down once I start sewing them together, which I think we might actually start soon, um, if, if that's what you're asking. So right now they're still like the 10, 10 and a half inches, but ultimately I am going to be cutting them down. All right. I am on to the center little area. Uh, best way to get into embroidery. Oh, towing around with the idea of trying to learn. I would say start with a kit. Uh, I think that's probably the easiest way to do it. And obviously, <laughs> you know, I want you to use one of our kits sort of thing too, but uh, it, it's nice to have just the supplies ready for you. So like our kits have the floss, the hoop, some fabric in it. And um, our patterns are, are on our new kits are pre-printed. Um, so it's all you need is like a, a scissors and you can use any scissors. You don't need an embroidery scissors. So I, I think that's probably the easiest way to give it a try. Uh, we, we have a lot of basic stitches and we also have a free pattern as well. Um, that raccoon, the stitching raccoon pattern that kind of guides you through with videos. Um, we'll send you an email every day of the videos. And then we also have blog posts of all the videos of, um, the stitches. I mean, the videos of stitches and that is, um, a way to learn, learn as well. So you can do that for free on our site. But yeah, having a kit is nice because then you have the hoop and the needle and the floss and, and, and fabric and all that just ready to go. Then you can see what you, if you like it, like it's a low, it, it's a low cost to entry embroidery, which I think is fabulous uh, compared to with some other crafts. So you can see if you like it um, with, with kind of minimal risk. All right, you guys, I'm weaving it in. We have got our deal done and just in the nick of time again <laughs> which is crazy so we we go here for an hour and we just finished so man it took an hour to do that whipped back stitch so that's the thing that's that's why i uh that's why i don't always there we go don't always um do that whipped back stitch i think because it's it feels like we're going over the whole thing again because we we kind of are but it looks so cute it looks like um baker's twine i think again on there so fun, you guys. So <laughs> I guess that's it for tonight. So here it is again for you guys who are looking in front. Cute little floofy tail. I think that's the best part. I love the little floofy tail. Um, that was fun. So I, I like that with these embroideries. Um, we're working through that. If you're if you knew, we were working through the whole alphabet of letters. I did a I did a, a animal for each letter of the alphabet, and we're working through all of them, uh, like one a week, um, and we're doing it like two weeks during the month, and we've been just kind of playing around with them. So I like I like that we've been kind of veering from the patterns a little bit, trying out some of these other stitches and stuff. That's just been fun. It's been just fun to try things, fun to play around, and fun to like you know oh I need work on this particular stitch. Okay, let's 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 do that. You know, uh, that's been great. So awesome. So <laughs> thanks for dealing with uh, my camera situation today. I appreciate that. It's kind of fun actually hanging out like it this way. Uh, maybe I'll make a, maybe we'll do that. How would you feel about that? You guys, um, like if there was an overhead view, but then like a little picture of me, like in the bottom or something sort of like this. So then we can still kind of see each other like a picture in picture. Uh, but then you can still see above. I think that might be a fun, fun thing. I might have to play with like since I gotta get a new cord, probably. <laughs> I'm gonna have to maybe play with, with the setup here a little bit. But awesome. So, all right, you guys. I'm just seeing if there's any other questions for tonight. Oh, yes. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Uh, have a fabulous weekend. Oh, Sharon said that would be cool with the with the picture-in-picture picture thing. And I, I, I could do it in a way where I can turn it off, too. Um, so it's not always picture-in-picture. 
Uh, but that would be kind of fun. All right, well, I think we'll call it there. So thanks again, and have a lovely weekend, everyone. And I will see you again on Monday. Good night. Oh, what do I do with this piece uh, when I'm done? Um, give me a sec, Bailey. I'm going to turn off my Facebook and YouTube here in a moment. Okay, there we go. Uh, I am actually going to